So, Pepe, I was just uh, looking at your website, yeah. uh, looking really good. So I was just wondering, can we start off with uh, you just telling us a little bit about your brand, how you began, uh, what, what it's about? Well, we started first myself uh, working for a big company. And then uh, from that, then I realized about the sustainability world and everything since uh, I was going to the whole 12 factories and knowing the world, be- uh, this uh, sector better. So then uh, I said, uh, well, I realized that I didn't want to to work like that anymore. So I quit from that uh, big uh, company, big retail department stores and then uh, we started our first uh, brand is called Intrepid Amo, Intrepid Amo in 2007 and then uh, from that uh, we just uh, we start making more uh, designs and t-shirts for other big big department stores but not for our own not, not with our own name and then from that we start having volumes and the knowledge on big production so we started one year later with our online with Thinking Mo mm-hmm. and uh, till now oh, so good. we started started making t-shirts, designing and production t-shirts, big department stores. They didn't know about the sustainability or organic or the standards or anything. So they said, okay, you, it's interesting for us. You can do it for us. And we said, yes. So from that, we got the expertise on um, on the big markets. And then we started our online first with the t-shirts and then slowly with all, all the other families we are working actually. And where is your um, production? Is it in Europe? Uh, we have like half in Europe and half in in India on a, on, the, on a community we started from the beginning there were 20 before now we are more than 120 people and it's of course in Barcelona we still have a, a good textile industry uh, around here very good professionals and people that can uh, can work for us mostly on sweater and, and complements I, I know a lot about production and uh, I mean my, my expertise is on production and garments even if I studied sociology and, and botanics nothing related to the fashion industry from from botanics uh, this is my my step to the organic and the sustainability is coming more more from the botanic world and the plants and other stuff that from the fashion industry but still the fashion has been always I, I've been lo- loving always about the, the fashion thing we started with t-shirts so we didn't we, we need we needed only more like a graphic design not uh, not a, as much uh, pattern design and many other things I enjoy Join with my partner is a gra- uh, have a graphic designer studio, so we joined together. I was in charge of the of the clothing and the production, and he was in charge more more of uh, the designs. And then we started uh, contracting designers for all other things. Myself, uh, of course, now I know about design, but I, uh, my expertise is more on production on fabrics. And you say that you're a sustainable brand. What accreditations uh, do you have in sustainability? Yeah, we work only with uh, God certified fabrics and yarns and dyes that's the first thing and also with uh, for the wool we always uh, buy only wool from the merino wool from New, New Zealand and uh, also we get only if we use polyester for the swimwear or any other thing we only work with a certified recycled polyester or nylon and um, now we started with tensile. In terms of the places we I I spend half of my time in India, most uh, controlling everything from the uh, from the cotton, from the fibers to the final garment, and uh, I think it's the best way to to certify the fair trade and then for the organic even uh, even we we buy always uh, everything with uh, god certified i think the best uh, the best guarantee is uh, that we are there watching exactly what is happening with all the supply chain with our stuff barcelona, when we produce here in barcelona we just ask for the uh, certified god yarns or whatever we use have to be organic and and, and fair trade certified and why india why did did you go to India to find your production? I, I knew a, a lot of things in India, so what what for me was the, the important is to find a, a country where they have cotton production uh, cotton crops i mean in terms of import and export you you need to import cotton in in any way on yarn on uh, fibers on fabric or on final garment mm-hmm. so the import uh, in terms of uh, pollution or sustainability anyway uh, you have to bring here uh, that stuff so i i decided to switch to india 
wanted to try with a uh, small community, which uh, I have been told by a friend that I have there, uh, who's very deep into the uh, fair trade stuff things. So then we started with them slowly, and then we grow in a long term deal. And uh, we can say we, we don't work in India with like many factories like a normal brand. We work, we do everything in the same place. Everything we do in India is in the same place. Yeah, and where in well, India are you based? What's your production? In Faridabad, close, very close. And you were saying that uh, you started off uh, supplying to big department stores. Are you still doing that? I mean, we we stopped last year because of uh, our brand became much bigger. The retailers were asking, like, why you have those uh, pieces with uh, cheaper prices on those department stores. Even the collection were a speci- a specific made for them. The, the prices, since we, the, since the deal was big quantities for on, only on one. On, on one deal we used to give them better prices for the big uh, big purchase order and then so the final prices on the shops were cheaper than our line so uh-huh. it, it started uh, damaging a little bit our retailers and uh, and so we since at the beginning was the a big percentage of our incomes but then lately since our brand grow uh, it started to be maybe five to ten percent of our income so we decided to to close that line in order to focus on on our little bit more expensive line mm. That's really interesting because a um, lot of the sustainable fashion brands that I've spoken to, they, you know, they uh, they struggle to get big orders, you know, from um, department stores and people who would sell their work. Um, and, you know, in a way you had achieved that. And that seems to be quite a good position to be in because firstly, you're making sustainable uh, fashion available to um, to more people. Did you not think that might be a, a better way to continue? What what happened why did you decide to concentrate on your own label which is smaller than to uh, provide larger quantities to this department store and continue sort of growing that well the thing is that actually i sell much more with my label than than what i was selling through the department stores so i focus on the not at the beginning of course department store uh, big ones help us to have big quantities and to set up the business but uh, they were struggling us also they were not fair trade with us you know what I mean the whole chain should be fair trade Uh, at the time we reached some point that we didn't need them and we decided to just jump into our line and to do the things uh, without uh, any pressure or any condition from those big retailers it was the strategy from the beginning to set up the whole business the structure the, the fabrics the yarns and uh, I mean, we are not against doing this again, but never with the same brand. You know what I mean? My brand needs to have pretty independent um, sales uh, structure and, uh, posi- and position in the market with uh, very studied and, uh, prices. Mm-hmm. And then the brand have a position and we have to respect that. And we cannot deal with uh, any other big retailer or department stores with their demand. Do you know who your customers are? Do you have a a consumer profile we really focus on those uh, from 25 to 40 years old people uh, men and women um, 60 percent women 40 percent men mm-hmm. conscious but not crazy conscious they wouldn't buy so many stuff we never built the brand focus on the sustainability it, it was never our main thing it was something like common sense for us to be organic and fair trade but our marketing or our message messages or all those things were never focused on the sustainability at the beginning. Now it's time maybe to push more on that and to to focus more on that messages since the people just have uh, more information and start knowing it. Uh, but this, our customer is a positive guy they, they uh, or girl. They don't want to listen about horrible things that are in the world. If, if we talk about the things we don't like, we talk with humor and we talk about the things we like, we talk seriously. This is so it's the way we found uh, for the people to to have a sympathetic overview of our brand, mm. uh, and um, yeah, but it's uh, we have all kind of, uh, of of customers. Many of them not 
attached to the sustainability. And of course, the, if North European countries, uh, it's very important in our the storytelling about the sustainability and the way we do things. And how do you market your brand? How do you reach new customers? As you know, in a, in a small brands, the last thing we put money or is in the marketing thing. <laughs> we still have uh, a lot of expenses on uh, design, production and, uh, and the basic. Mm-hmm. But uh, of course, we have online and offline strategies um, uh, that becomes along with our possibilities. And uh, But uh, we grow organically, double every year. Growth is we double incomes every year. Mm-hmm. So uh, naturally and organically, being in, on the streets on every year, we are in more and more uh, shops on the streets, uh, the retailers. Mm-hmm. So we, we get known on the streets and uh, our uh, uh, internet sales also grow because of that. And we just, we try to talk, we try to don't say many things, but when we say something, say properly and uh, in uh, and clearly. Uh, and of course, we we have our uh, sales team and we grow on in many countries every year with uh, new uh, agents or distributions. And this is uh, what we are really focused on to grow. Our customers, most of our customers are not following the influencers of that or that kind of people. This, um, we are not, let's say we are not in the high fashion uh, world. Of course we have and we use Instagram and Facebook. Mm-hmm. mostly mm-hmm. but uh, as you can see um, I mean we have I think like 16,000 followers in Instagram we post every two days something I mean we are not crazy about it mm-hmm. And uh, but uh, when uh, we will see in the next future that uh, we can have returned from uh, from that action then of course we will we will go deeply on that but till now we are focused more on other kind of strategies and more on the street and on the online uh, mm-hmm. even though we grew in the streets and we still focus on in the streets and what, what are your biggest challenges at the moment do you think in, in growing your business many different ones uh, of course we hire more and better designers having in some styles also on some fabrics to have enough uh, quantities to develop our own fabrics and also and then in, in uh, things to improve uh, marketing and design we have a lot of things to improve but uh, and also in terms of um, conquered many new countries so we work on many directions uh, on different challenges of course uh, online uh, sales are very important for us too many challenges in many departments so really needs to, to become bigger is those retailer shop retailer dep- or department stores which are specifically on only for organic or fair trade or sustainable brands, you know what I mean? Mm. Then uh, this uh, will be uh, like the, let's say, the big places where the people know that can go there with a, with a good uh, filter and uh, they can choose whatever they want, uh, feeling themselves uh, relaxed about what they are buying. You know? mm. It's been really interesting talking to you. Thank- Great. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Disney. Take care. Have a good day. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye.